Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Nail Talk Live. And tonight we have a very special guest, eh, Debbie? Yes, we uh, do. We have our international trainer, and she's flown all over the world to teach uh, and educate, um, uh, well, nail art, how to educate, um, to be more um Yeah, she's actually the trainer of the trainers. Yeah. She's the mother of Magnetic. One yeah. of the mothers of <laughs> Magnetic. Mother. Yes. Yeah. And she's always part of our team, Ingeborg Menzoni. Dus welcome. Thank you. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Yeah, it, was a, it is an honor to be here because I really, really enjoy yeah, making nails, give classes, uh, help people to get where they want to be. So, yes, I love to make a nail. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to show us tonight how to do a stiletto nail, a new version of a stiletto nail with a very cool abstract design. Yeah. When was the first time that you ever wore a stiletto nail? Poo, that is a long time ago. Um, I, you know the bottle we gave away on the shows? Yeah, the water bottles. The water bottles. The first water bottle, I made a design on Mayer hand, yeah. and it was a purple one. And that was, in that time, I made the first stiletto. So that's a long time ago. Okay. I don't know which year it is. <laughs> it's... Ah. Yeah, I don't know no, either, yeah, no. but Probably you know, a long time ago. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll just time. figure out when it was, so <laughs> let's get started. So during the leader, we figured out it's <laughs> about 15 <laughs> years ago that you first did the stiletto nail. Yeah. And they look really, really different from nowadays. Yes, it was mm -hmm. actually more an oval nail, eh? an element. Yeah, element. I think so. These days you see that the stilettos are more like pointy, very pointy, yeah, sharp. Extremely pointy. Extremely pointy. And in the old days, you could also see it was a little bit more almond. It had, it, they had a point, but less sharp. Yeah, you, can yeah. you, you could have made a point, but we didn't pinch. No. So that's also a I very I different thing. It's the, m I think, the massa of the nail. Yeah, yes. the volume. The volume was different. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you do the first set of stilettos on forms? Because I actually did my yeah. first stilettos on tips. No, on forms. Okay. On forms, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that was already a stiletto nail. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And in Holland, people that are watching us from outside of Holland, outside of the Netherlands, don't know this, but you were really the queen of stilettos. At you always base, had yes. stilettos, and you had one. I saw a photo of us <laughs> recently <laughs> from years ago, and you always had one nail like really long. Yeah. After a while, I was yeah fed up with the with the stilettos on my hand because when you go in your hair or you you stuck somewhere, and sometimes <laughs> I stuck my husband who was sitting next to me, but you know, then I said, okay, I will have my thumb. Yeah. And it was better with flying because you couldn't bring a knife. So if you have 10 stilettos, are they allow yeah. you to I go in the plane? I never had a problem <laughs> getting on the plane with my <laughs> stiletto nails and they were longer than your stiletto <laughs> yeah. nails. Absolutely. So exaggeration is also one of your key features. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but let's get started. Well, the nail is already prepped and you yeah. applied seal and protect. Yeah, because I think on seal and protect, I use it always as yeah as a primer and it makes the nail really harder so i think that's uh yeah a good base to okay. do always be careful when you apply seal and protect it it's applied very thin and very sparingly mm -hmm. don't touch the cuticle of course to prevent overexposure mm -hmm. yeah so i did that and maybe we can show this on camera yeah. what i do is i take away the inner part then I take this part away. And why do I do that? I'm going to explain that later to you. I will stuck it here perfectly, straight. And you know why? Now Perhaps we can uh, do move a little bit slower and hold that in position Sorry. underneath top shot. And then make sure that you watch the screen because people have to see what you're doing. So you took off the front part. Yes. Ripped it off, actually, yeah. instead of folding it, what we always do. Mm -hmm. So this is another trick. Mm -hmm. 
and then you fold it uh, or stick it backwards. And this is important. Why? Why? Because when you stuck the form, if you will stuck it later on like this, you can really um, yeah. fold it together and it will stay on this position. Yeah. If you don't do that and you have the, the green side visible here, then it won't stuck. So, so the you glue mean that it adheres better because of the glued part, more tight like a, a cone? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you would have had the shiny side underneath, of course, that doesn't stick. No. And then it would be a perfect round shape. Yeah. Ah, uh -huh. I, yeah. I thought, what is she doing? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes Ingeborg amazes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we are going to apply the, the form. First roll it a little bit so it's in already in shape. And then we are going to count. Oh, open these. And then going to count. And then I'm counting the lines. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then I'm going to cut. This, the side lines. These lines I was counting. One, two, three, four. And there I'm, oh, there I'm cutting. Take yeah, away this the is corner. really something that we see now a lot of people doing. Huh? Yeah. And um, I think it's a, it's a good thing because that will make you nail so much slimmer. Yeah. Um, and you don't have the problem of um, over pinching, for example, mm -hmm. by pinching, making the nail, of course, a little bit smaller by using this technique. S sometimes pinching is not even necessary. Yeah. Well, Ingeborg will pinch anyhow. Yeah. So well, I there. always <laughs> pinch too, but <laughs> I too. for the salon <laughs> version, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I press. Of course, I have to remove these. Yeah. Then I take the finger and we are keeping oh the form a little bit downwards. Because if you put the form a little bit downwards, just a little bit here. If we keep the form a little bit downwards, then you have the right amount of product on top of it. Yeah. And you can make a really nice point. Mm -hmm. If you put the form too much up, you get a snake tongue. You understand what I mean by that? It, it splits open. It splits open because then you have too less product to Not make enough the point. Product. Not enough product, yes. Oh, that, uh, that is an interesting point of view. I have to see the side angle, though. So perhaps you can hold the finger. And we can try to show the people what the, the downward degree of the angle of the form is. So it's angled downward, and it's angled downward. On the other side, of the form is a little bit folded in. Yeah. So I think you need to correct that a little bit with your tweezers. I will. And of course, um, while you do this, oh yes, it's already corrected. <laughs> ah, perfect. <laughs> And you need to prepare your product, so let's go to a let's go to a little commercial. coats by magnetic and uh, while we did this we had to adjust a little bit here in the studio so we're now ready to rumble yes let's get started so in and you these close the form yeah absolutely so let's show that on the top view as well so the flaps on top of the skin can you show them again which flaps are attached those two I close them down because then the form is more steady and I can do everything what I want with it. Be and then it doesn't move. Yeah. These forms also stick very well. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and Sometimes it's it hard to get them yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But that's better than that they fall off. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I absolutely. once worked for a company and, mm -hmm. and they really had forms that they mm -hmm. you just blew and they fell off. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to make this kind of nails, you need to have a form that really sticks to the uh, to the finger yeah. because you have to, you know, put some pressure on it and work on it and if the form just slips off, that's not okay. So yeah. better a better adhesion than one that falls off. <laughs> better safe than sorry. Absolutely. As everything in life. So you're going to work with power gel. I'm going to work with power gel and I'm fall in love with the Kolinsky brush oval 8. Oval 8. The student brush mm -hmm. because there's a little bit more power in the you can give more power on these hairs instead of an acrylic brush. Yeah. But a lot of people yeah prefer pressure. Yeah. A lot yeah. of stronger yeah. pressure. pressure. Stronger yeah. pressure. So that's my favorite brush nowadays. And you work with prep and wipe in your dab and dish a Abs little bit? Yeah. Because it prevents stickiness. It prevents stickiness and uh, it's the hairs of the brush stay alive longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I need to take my product. Power gel clear. Power gel clear. Just a very tiny bit. Why do you think it's important, Debbie? Because I see Ingeborg doing that as well now. Mm -hmm. That the first beat is applied half on the natural nail, half on the free edge. In the old days, I would do the clear part mm -hmm. against the natural nail. Yeah. Um, I think this gives you a little bit more security in... Um, the way how um, the clear part connects to the natural nail. And in the old days, we always let the form mm -hmm. just sit there uh, till we completely finished. And nowadays yeah. you will see oh that yeah. the form yeah, will be difference. removed yeah. um, because of the pinching and the everything, filing. E filing. Yeah. Um, so then it's better to have a little bit more uh, strength connection. on the connection on those natural nail to prevent holes or maybe little gaps that you have between your clear and the natural nail. Because Ingeborg, do you work the same way l as you are working now when you work with acrylics? Also connecting the natural nail bed to the free edge? Yeah. Yeah. I always do. But with acrylic it has to be so thin. So you always use also a clear layer when you do acrylic? It's like basic yeah. or just with gel? No, or I gel? always use a clear layer okay. underneath. And now I have a little bit too less product. Yeah, not enough. So I just add something, add a little bit more clear. You mentioned that with acrylic you have to be careful that you work really thinly. I've noticed working with power gel myself that I had a tendency, at least in the beginning, to work too thick. Yeah, I had difficulty with um, sizing out my bead of product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it um, it disappears under your brush, looks like. And with acrylic, you have to be so quick. But this one, you can yeah pull it back if you have too much. Mm -hmm. You can pull it back, or you can take it to the front and you can remove it whenever you like it, when when you have too much. Make it sense? No. Yeah, yeah, well, up to a certain extent. Uh, I th uh, my problem is that when I take it out of the jar with the spatula, it is. I had difficulty with sizing out the amount. Yeah. That I think, oh, this is really a, a small application, and then it's on the nail, and all of a sudden it's it's thicker than I was expecting it, or vice versa. I think it has to do because you are a real acrylic person. Yeah, probably. And acrylic always. Um, you can go in. Yes. I will go into the lamp. Mm. <laughs> uh, acrylic always has, uh, of course, uh, the mix ratio with the liquid. Liquid's mm. evaporating, so it always flattens out. So yeah. if you take out a product, it always looks more, the bead looks more than when you put it exactly on top of the... It Due flattens the out. the evaporation, of yes. course, it shrinks also it shrinks. while you are yes, working. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, of course, with power gel, you don't have it. So if you pick it up, you pick the same amount, yeah. but this is not shrinking. So no. that is too much product. Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. So yeah. uh, if you're working with power gel, you always need to have less than, um, than you would normally pick up with your acrylic. Yeah, 
I, I've yeah. never realized this. Me uh, neither. I learn every day, <laughs> especially <laughs> in Nil Talk Live, but this is really clar it clarifies a lot. Yeah. Because I was really wondering, I do see that there is a tendency nowadays in the Nil world mm -hmm. to make Nils with more volume mm -hmm. in Absolutely. general than what we did 10, 15 years ago. But that's due to the reverse technique, which is getting popular. And I do also think because of the power gels or poly gels or everything, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh, building up volume is so much easier now yeah. uh, because the product really s sits, it stands, it stays, yes. it stays there. So it's very easy to build up more product. And yeah, if you're used to do it this way. Very interesting yeah. angle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, This is really, I'm going Absolutely. to use this. Great. Me too. <laughs> Let's get to the nail bed. You're going to use two colors. Two colors, nude and extender. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I don't like the extender close to the cuticle, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the nude close to the cuticle, because then it's too too pinky. The too nude is quite pink. Yeah. And the extender is more flashy. Yeah. So then I use the flashy one at the back, the extender at the back, so and fade it a little bit. So mm -hmm. then it has a more natural look. Mm -hmm. Is the nude gives more a little bit more coverage as well, the extender? The nude gives a lot of a lot of coverage to cover up the the natural nail, mm -hmm. the whiteness of the natural nail. Absolutely. So the interesting thing now, while I'm looking at you, Ingeborg, is I see that amount of product, and already I think to myself, "Whoa, that's a lot." That's a lot, but I'm using the half of it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Because that is easier to get it on the nail yeah. than to take just exactly the amount you want. But normally, what I normally do is put here, put on that finger, put on that finger, and then I'm working yeah, all with four fingers. With one spatula? With one, f yeah, with four fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay, also so interesting. I do it, and you see, that's what I need. And then I have an amount of gel here, but I don't mind. But it's easier to, yeah, to place it on the nail. Yeah, that's a good tip for people yeah. who find it difficult uh, okay. to apply the power gel. First go to the back and make it really yeah, smooth into her skin, S a little bit fading. So push it back a little bit that I later on need a l just a little bit of, how to say, uh, extender. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to create the nail bed, the smile line. The smile line, yeah. Is the smile line in a stiletto nail more pointed, more oval or more round? I think it's nicer to make it a little bit pointier. Yeah, so that it mimics a little bit the shape of the free edge. Yeah. <gasps> Debbie, mm -hmm. did you ever do half moons on a set of stilettos? Not on stilettos. Oh, you have to do that. Yeah, <laughs> you just a pew light bulb. Yeah, yeah I was looking. Yeah. Don't you ask that for moon. me now. No, 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 of course <laughs> not. But you have a half moon, and yeah. I think to myself, oh, that would be cool. Yeah, but also is cool is doing a half moon with baby boom. Looks also awesome. Yeah, but I I love the Neil Sharisa did with the sugar effect on mm -hmm. it. But do you think it's also nice when mm -hmm. it's just a built-in half? Mo okay, mm -hmm. you have to show us that. Yeah. Okay, you agree that Debbie has to show us that, <laughs> not this time, but before the end of the <laughs> year. Absolutely. And I will be your model, okay. because I love oh. half moons. Yeah. Of course, of course. You're lucky one. And you have to be a little bit careful with your hair. Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's okay. How long have you been a trainer, Ingeborg? Pooh, I think... I'm a nail technician now for 31 years. And a trainer, 94, may ask me to be a trainer. 25 years. 25 years, yeah. And I still love it. And that time, of course, people had to stand oh. around your demo table. Now you can show people using cameras and angles. So you are really able to show them and focus their attention to what they need to see. Absolutely. So and what you are seeing now is that I make a um, stoeprandje. How do you say a that? A wall. A wall. wall. To make a wall. And I like you to turn the hand so I can see just a little bit like that. If it's in the center. Mm -hmm. So check it from the client's perspective. And then, and this is what I love with power gel. 
you can still correct it. Yeah, you can turn it around. You can still correct it with acrylic. I had sometimes I had problems with um, it's out harder. With the curing. curing. With the curing. No. What's wrong? Yeah, <laughs> I press and then a little bit too f too much on that corner. Well, isn't that uh, that's what I love about power gel? If that happens, you just start over. Do yeah. it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's the thing that I have difficulty with when it comes to normal gel. Yeah, because it goes and goes and goes and goes. Are you going to file the smile line? I'm going to file the smile yeah. line. So let's put it in the light. Mm -hmm. Are you now going to give it a full cure? What about pinching? What are you uh, going to do? Ten seconds, and then I'm pinched a little bit, just and not a. I'm I'm not using a clamp. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, just 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Mm -hmm. Listen to it. Listen to it, and then I can pinch it a little bit. And you're using a normal traditional tweezers. Yeah, I love that one. The other ones, I think it, they are too uh, t uh, tight. Yeah, you can go back. Yeah. Too, too uh, the pressure buildup is yeah. too tight on the nail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also like tweezers. Uh, I, I, sometimes they use pliers nowadays to pinch. I still don't understand how to do that, but but I know that it's an essential tool. Mm. Yeah. Pliers. Pliers. Uh -oh. Oh, okay. Yes, we even have that uh, for expert, uh, experts. Oh yes, I saw. Yeah, yeah, I saw the pinching tool. Yes. Well, I do think that's great if you want to create like a very pointy stiletto nails or something like that. Yeah, or perhaps a very deep modern element. Yeah, or a very I yes, exact. But yeah, I do Those prefer. Types of I do prefer as well to really use my own pressure uh, on the nail, so yeah. I can decide how much I wanted to pinch or not. Yeah. yeah. I think we need to do a show for all you guys about the differences between the modern styles of nails. That we'll mm -hmm. discuss those differences. Okay, now I'm going to fill up the part. With extender, so with the with other extend. color. Yeah. And again, a little bit. Yeah. But there's more on my spatula. And then keep the finger down. Don't use too much. Uh, prep and wipe to do it. Otherwise, the uh, it looks like if it's going to float. You understand then what I mean? Yeah. If you're using too much prep and wipe, then it will run into the cuticle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the top layer, it looks like if it's going to yeah float. Yeah, because the prep and wipe will uh, give an extra layer between the adhesion of the next scoop you took yep. instead of the la layer that's underneath. Maybe a little bit more. Don't be scared to add on if needed. That's the benefit of this product, but it also takes away time and effort later on when you do the filing and the finishing of the nail, of course. Well, if May is looking, she would be laughing that I add some more product. Because once we were in Sweden, and I add, and I add, and I add, and I add, and then some suddenly May said, stop adding product. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was there for a training and May was my model. So it was so funny. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> You're now blending it towards the cuticle again. Yeah, because there I want to have an amount of gel. And I think this is it. Yes, that's your brush. Yes. <laughs> you're in love with it. Oh, I love it. Now you are cleaning everything. Yeah. Because you're finished now with the uh, skin tones. Yep. And I hate dirty pots. Yeah, that's true. When you're making a stiletto, does your wall need to be like very high or maybe just just a very thin layer? Is there a specific rule in how, how high you must build a nail bed? Um, I think I will have yeah, two millimeters and go 
thinner to the sides, mm -hmm. so one and a half. So higher the in the middle point. Higher in the middle point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I really like to have the balance further on on the nail, because yeah, when you make a bridge, yeah, you don't want a flat bridge. You, ha mm -hmm. you need to have a little bit of a curve, and you only can achieve that if you have enough product in the center of the nail. So that's why I really need yeah, the C curve. Mm -hmm. So I need product there. But not so much as you sometimes see. No, absolutely because not. Because sometimes it is really, with the 3D French, we also notice that the <laughs> more you add, th th the deeper the 3D effect is, of yes. course. But you have to be a little bit careful with, yeah. with this. Yeah, but then you can maybe place your form a little bit more down. Uh, or upward, depends on the m if you make a modern yeah, shape and you depends. angle it upward, then the first mm -hmm. lines can, of course, be deeper. Yeah. But okay, this is a whole technical discussion. Yeah. What are you doing? Just again checking my form if it still is on the right position. And it was a little bit open, so I just placed it a little bit back. And now I'm going to remove the sticky layer. Mm -hmm. But the nails, of course, already completely cured now. So, yeah. so pushing back the form, uh, uh, tightening the form, yeah. has an effect on the free edge still? Yeah, because bec it's so thin. Because it's so thin. You remove the sticky layer because you're going to file? I'm going to file it. And you're going to file uh, the, f the corner or the wall? Yeah. And, of course, the... Stuprand, again, yeah, the, the wall. So you're using an emery board, which is a wooden file, 180-100 uh, grit, and you're using which side? Um, the rough side. The 100 grit. And why do you prefer to do this step with the emery board? Because then I can make a really sharp line. The, the, the center is harder mm -hmm. than with the... Um, with the plastic core. With the plastic core. First, make your lines really uh, sharp, and mm -hmm. then make... Be careful with your hair, Ingeborg. Then make the, the point of the nail the bed extension, yeah. mm -hmm. make it round a little bit. I don't like it to have it point too pointy. So you're still keeping it a little bit roundish instead of the yeah. same pointiness as the... Absolutely, and if you have edge. product still left on the yeah, clear part, yeah. I always use my emery board and do it like that. That I'm sure that there's nothing. To hmm. thin out the, the extension, the yeah. clear extension, if there is a nude color on top of that. Yeah. That's uh, also a good trick. Eh? Yeah, that's a good trick. Yeah. She's on a roll. Yeah. But sometimes you also see, especially with gels, and if you build up your wall, you have like the wall up here, but then still it's a little bit of, mm -hmm. it's floating underneath the wall. So if you do this, that's a good, very good tip. Then you remove that product over there. Yeah, and you don't see it when you keep it mm -hmm. yeah, upside down. Yep. You don't see the yeah, nail bed extension. Okay. Do you also file the surface of the nail bed? Uh, no, not now. No? No. Some people like to do that. I see that happening. Mm -hmm. I can do that. No, I, I, I no it's, it's not necessary to do it. But why don't you do that? It takes time. Yes, it takes time. And it's probably also not needed, in your opinion. No. For now, it's not. Because my role is, is good. Yeah, and it is not if you're using way too much product, that's why you, they're using a lot of product. It's because they feel the need to file it down and to shape it, really. But if you really style with your brush mm -hmm. and not with the file, then yeah. you can um, just apply it like apply this. Apply it like this. Yeah. Okay, l so let's uh, continue. Because you're going to make a, a cool, modern, new stiletto uh, variation using liner gels liner and aqua colors. Aqua colors. And that is really exciting. Uh, you gave a training, the expert training. Actually, Debbie was also a trainer during that trainer. Yeah. And I saw the results. And s you also showed this to the students or the trainers. It is just beautiful. And well. I don't know how to do it, but it has to be easy because aquacolors are easy. 
They are. And, you know, I got this trick from Katerina, our nail art queen. Yeah. So, yeah, she did it. And it was really so stunning. So I thought I have to share this with everybody. Yes, that's so. super. Okay. You're going to use liner gel white. Liner gel white. Of course, one of our favorite products. And I'm gonna, sorry, it's okay. <laughs> Make it thin. Very thin layer. Yeah. Just painting it on. Yeah, so the color that I put later on on top of it will be, uh, how to say it, m brighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, aqua colors need to have a, a light underground, the background, for y for them to pop. Yes, of course, because yeah. otherwise you won't Te see them. Then no. transparent. <laughs> A little bit more. This My is hair. just coverage that you need, so you don't build up any structure now. No, absolutely not. This gives none strength. Is it possible to build structure with liner gel? That's just a question that pops up right now. If you would apply it in a couple of coats, probably, because mm -hmm. it is fairly strong. Mm -hmm. It's not a builder. We have no. To we have to oh, I know why you're asking. <laughs> we have to check that. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, what I do now, Are you going in to the meantime... Yeah, okay. In the meantime, I put on a drop of... Can everybody see it? Yes. yes. Yellow and one drop yellow here. Okay. I'm going to use blue and put the blue there and one there. Huh? Okay. Then I'm going to use the red and then I'm going to use a little bit of black and because I'm afraid that I'm using too much black first I put here some black and then a tiny pot two tiny pots and then I'm gonna where's the brush yes got it then I'm gonna stir this a little bit okay wow. now I hope I can leave it in the... I'm really curious what she's going to do, because yeah, in my opinion, it would turn brown now. Yeah. <laughs> and be a mess, but, but let's... Oh, Ingeborg, stop. Let's go to Top Shot. So what are you doing? I'm taking some of the colors and just place dots here and there. And you now didn't I'm wipe away the sticky layer, you, you, you work on the gel. I forgot. That's stupid of me. Oh no. So, no problem. Just take away the sticky layer and let's have a look. I forgot to stop. Well, uh, if it would be possible, uh, uh, yeah. it was really, I was like, okay, what? what no, uh, you okay. know, it's not the nerves, but it's, yeah, I like to, to show off <laughs> and forget <laughs> something. <laughs> And now I take the matte top yeah. coat. I'm so happy that you said it. Oh, there's a whole step <laughs> missing. Yeah, I missed oh. a whole step. I was so enthusiastic to go about the colors, but okay. <laughs> I missed the step. Okay, so you do liner gel white, and yes. then you do extreme matte. Yeah. Cure it. Yeah. Okay, come do it. Okay, liner gel white. So actually the nail becomes like um, uh, a, a Big Mac. Yep. So layer on layer on layer on layer. Yeah. Who would have thought that we would be doing this uh, 10 years ago? No. It well would have been a total no-go. A top gel in between layers of gel. Yeah. I think... <laughs> okay. <laughs> in the old <laughs> days, there were a lot of things not possible. We look over, see what we do now and put into the nails. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to reload your palette Absolutely. a little bit. A little bit, because I had two less color there, because it's a very long stiletto. So you're using the aqua colors on your palette. 
once they're dry, uh, can you still use them or not? Yeah, you just use some prep and wipe, mm -hmm. and then you can just reactivate, reactivate it. Yeah. So with just one pallet, you can do like for an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but don't do it. I think it looks really, really <laughs> ugly. So you and prefer dirty. you prefer to use like new. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? How much can you do with a mm -hmm. one bottle? So well, a lot. A lot. <laughs> what is uh, something from my experience, uh, guys at home, when you start working with the Depend dish and the Aquacolors with Prep and Wipe, make sure that you either have two Depend dishes, one to work with your power gel and one to work with your Aquacolors, because it does get contaminated. So if you don't do that, then you have to clean the Prep and Wipe okay. in between. Absolutely. And even the, the Depend dish. Yeah. Can we? I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay, what I'm now going to do is take away a little bit the, the st if, yeah, if there's still sticky layer. About a sticky layer. Yeah. Prep and wipe. Yeah. And just little dots again. Little dots again. And why does this need to be mixed colors and not the pure colors? Because the end result is later on really, really beautiful. Because with the pure colors you're going to bring some extra Highlights. Oomph. Yeah. Well, we just have to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a long stiletto, so it takes a longer time with... Ah, no, no, pro no problem at all. I think people are curious to un understand what you're showing. You have to be a little bit careful with your hair. Yeah. What I always tell them, if you want it, try to get, if you have blue here, try to get the blue also in the back. So m be sure that you have a nice composition. Composition. <laughs> That's one of the most difficult things mm -hmm. to get in your hands when you start to do nail art. Absolutely. Because composition is very, uh, it's a matter of taste. Yep. And a little bit understanding, but it's more taste to understand your own taste and then to adjust it to a more harmonious balance. I agree. Take a little bit more because I was too, how do you say it? Zuinig? Thrifty. Thrifty? You were too thrifty. thrifty. Yes. Okay, that's a weird word. Now I'm going to put some... The pure color. The pure color. So you're now using with yellow, and are you applying that on a specific part of the nail? Yeah, on, on um, the white spots there are still there. So in between the other elements, yeah. but then towards uh, an already yellow part, or is that not...? Just put it on the white spot where you think, hey, here I can use a little bit more. To cover up the white spots. It's just a feeling again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like a, a painting by Kandinsky. A Monet? Yeah, yeah, if it yeah, if it would be uh, flowers. Flowers. Very abstract. It's uh, funny how you can see that there are you see? Some lines coming. And that coming is because yeah. there is black inside. That is the mixture I made before mm -hmm. with the black. And then you see the black lines are coming. Oh. Ah, so that's why you, you're adding, mixing the colors and mixing them. So when you go back over it with the brighter colors, 
than the black will form lines. The black will form lines, exactly. Cool. Yeah. This is actually making your product work for you. Yeah, yeah. have a look. Oh, yeah, of course you can see. <laughs> And if I want to let it run even more, just use a little bit of prep and wipe, and then ew, it shrinks. Interesting. Beautiful. I think this would be also very cool in, in on uh, summer days. Yes, absolutely. If for spring. And of course, if you do this in a set, I mean, I can imagine that you do the the ring fingers with the reverse technique mm -hmm. and the other nails then in a complementary shade mm -hmm. or even white gel polish and then on, on top of that the aqua colors to get a nice balance. Or you could make butterfly wings. <laughs> Abs you can, you do can do anything with anything it. Anything yeah. with it. But I prefer this one. And, and then... Uh, how yes, is there... Oh, what are you going to do? Now I'm going... going can you remove your finger a little bit? Now I'm go taking my paper palette and put some red color concentrates on there. And then, uh, yep, got it. Standard builder gel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clear. Clear. Where is my spatula? Here. Hey. Oh, <laughs> it was hidden a little bit. Take it, put it there. I make a mess out of my table. Ah, we're used to that. We're going to yeah. fix it after <laughs> taping. Good. And what are you going to do? So you're also taking black? A little bit of black. Aqua color. Aqua color. And then I'm going to stir. Cool. Looks like stained glass. Yeah. And because of the black, yes, it's a little bit. Yeah, how do you say it? Gets Bordeaux. Yeah. The c you change the color a little bit. That's it. My gel brush. Now you're going to use this mixture. This mixture. If you look at the side. You have to put it in the middle of the screen. Okay, please. sorry for yes. the camera. If you look to the side, you have a um, um, little gap. Little gap. And I don't want to see that because mm -hmm. I think it's not so nice if you have a um, uh, hoogteverschil. A difference uh, of height. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is now to place the red and to fade it a little bit over the line. Mm -hmm. But still, you can see through. Are you also going to paint the wall with this uh, product? Yeah, the rest of the wall I'm going to paint. And you're using a very tiny brush. Yeah. This is just for painting the wall, or? Is there still white in your brush, yes. Mrs. Sonita? <laughs> <Don't laughs> Don't say. <laughs> well, this happens to all of us. When we're at home or in the studio, we are working and we think to ourselves, oh, did I cure that nail? No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I actually once had, when I was working on Debbie for an inlay design, I applied a builder gel and I did nice things and I forgot to seal it <laughs> or put it in the light. And then the, the next step on the camera, all of the inlay floated up, up during the work. And I thought, what's <laughs> happening? What's <laughs> happening? So no problems at all. Oh, but this gives life to the nail. Absolutely. And I thought when I saw this, I had something like, oh my God, Katharina, how beautiful design. Yeah, Katharina has really created. Mm. It oh. was also thanks to her that we were able to show the 3D French nail. She's our trend spotter. Absolutely. And a very good one. <laughs> well, just a little bit. Now I take a little bit more red. So you darken up the color. Yeah, to make it a little bit better in the corner. 
not too much and not too much on the skin so yes i'm almost happy good for you yeah. happiness in life is important yeah, absolutely and this corner of course also because we have two corners and fade it a little bit be careful with your hair that's Just it let's have a look at this beautiful result a beautiful nail uh, with of course you need to cure this for yep. how long one Ink? and a half minute one and a half minute and then you're going to cap the nail using uh, you can do it with power gel you can do it with um, the standard builder gel mm -hmm. so it, it depends on where yeah you like to work with okay well then i think it's wise well first let's have one one more look at how it looks now because mm -hmm. now it's set so get out of the light Deb. And let's have a look at how the blending of the nail bed towards the free edge is. Alright, th this is the last color step. This is the last color step, yep. Beautiful. And then it's just capping in. And yeah. then just capping in. Then I propose that during the capping of this nail, we're going to look at somebody else who creates a beautiful design, which is half inside the nail, half outside of the nail. The person you will watch is uh, Julia Vorobieva. The voiceover is done by me because unfortunately Julia speaks only Russian. But this design is beautiful and is made with white liner gel, color concentrates, and of course, frosted pink fiber gel. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Yulia Vorobyova, I'm a magnetic trainer from Russia. And now I'm going to show to you the wedding design. Yulia uses for this design a rather different way of building up the design. She starts with applying a thin coat of frosted pink fiber coat on the tip. Frosted pink is semi-translucent pink. Yulia prefers to mix all of her colors herself. She uses gel polish concentrates blue, yellow and red, neon pigments yellow and pink. And she uses the base liner gel white, which is a super white intense gel. She mixes the colors as she goes. The first flower will be a soft pink shaded color. As you can see, she doesn't really blend the color, but she makes sure that the color has different parts. Some parts are pinker, other parts are whiter, and then when she applies the petals on the base of the nail, you can see that the flower is built up of different tones of pink and white. This helps to create the effect of a lifelike flower. When the first flower is applied, Yulia cures this and prepares for the second flower, which will be more coral in color, by adding a little bit of yellow and neon pink. The coral flower is applied around the cuticle area and again is made by simply pushing down the brush onto the nail surface. For these base flower petals, Yulia uses a rather big nail art brush, to be precise the detailer brush number 3. The lower flower is lighter, so Yulia adds more yellow to it and is a little bit bigger. You can also see that the design is focused on the right side of the nail, making it more elegant. While this is curing, Yulia creates the color she needs to create her leaves. Every floral design needs green leaves. The color is a soft green tone and she just adds leaves. Be careful that these don't touch each other, to keep them separated so that it's easier for the eye to see that it's a leaf. The green really gives a pop of color in this rather muted design. Shadowing is very important when you work with floral designs. And shadowing is easiest when you work with gels using a clear base. In this instance it's base gel clear mixed with a little bit of the color. The color choice depends on the base color of the design. In this case it's pink, so the magenta is used to create a magenta shadow effect. In the coral shade of the design, the coral flower, you will need a slightly more coral shading tone. The clear makes it easier to blend out the shadow over the flower petals without losing the definition of the flower petal itself. Adding a little bit of blue and yellow creates a green tone which is used to deepen the color of the green leaves. Now it's not that important that you don't touch 
the other leaves because it's transparent so you will get automatically a build up. Keep the shadow darkest around the flower, lighter towards the outside of the design. When you are happy with this, cure this application. Using gold foil, Julia will add a little bit more effect to the design. Apply the gold foil using a little bit of clear gel and use it sparingly. You want the design to be interesting because of the whole design, not of only the gold foil that you see. Use a dotting tool to, f to flatten everything. Mixing frosted pink with a little bit of neon pink pigment, it becomes a thicker pink color, which is semi-transparent, but that is used around the flowers to give the effect of a milky, dewy morning. Don't cure this and then use base and top, which is clear, and blend everything together. The clear is used over the flowers, the pink colors used around the flowers. Blending everything together makes the flowers appear to grow out of the foggy underground. Working around the design create a little bit of dimension and ensure that there are no low spots or high spots. This will make it easier for you to create the finished result later on. When you need a darker shade, always mix black with red and blue to create a lifelike dark color that she's using to create the little veins in the green leaves and the branches of the design. This also grounds the design, otherwise it would be floating in free air. In the center of the flowers, Julia also adds a little bit more shadow to create a more visual contrast between the flower center and the outside of the flower. Using Supreme Finish, the nail is finished and again she focuses on the fact that it needs to blend evenly to have an even surface. Using a smaller brush, Master Detailer, she is creating extra additional highlights on top of the flower petals. These highlights make sure that the eye is drawn towards the center of the flower and that the design is more interesting. Don't apply the highlights everywhere. Apply them here and there on the nail design where the light would hit the design. Also add the flowers on top of the green leaves. For this and all these steps she's using the original colors. When this is cured, Julia is going to finish the design giving it a little bit more of a jewel-like identity. Using a little bit of fiber coat, she then takes pearls and silver bullions to create the centers of the flowers. When you make floral designs, it's important that you focus the center of the flowers. You can do this with rhinestones, pearls, bullions, or with, for instance, little dots. You can see the inspiration Julia had and what she made. Get inspired and try to do this yourself. I really think you as an amazing artist, Absolutely. so beautiful, and who would have thought of of going over those flowers using frosted pink? Yeah. I mean, I would be scared to lose my design. Absolutely, but a real artist, that lady. Of course, I was enjoying watching Julia together <laughs> with Debbie, and Ingeborg already made a start with filing. Yeah. Where are you now, Ingeborg? I already filed the lower arch line, and mm -hmm. a little bit, Later on, I'm going to uh, perfect fine it, fine-tune it. And now I'm filing the, yeah, the upper side lines. Are you going to really make a really pointed stiletto? Now? Absolutely. Nowadays, it's pointed. In the past, it was pointed. <laughs> but don't forget to, to place, can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. To place the file a little bit underneath because Otherwise, you ha have uh, bellies hanging here. A pregnant nail. Yeah, a pregnant <laughs> nail, absolutely. So place it okay, under... It at home, don't pick this up as a new trend, no. pregnant <laughs> nails. We <laughs> like the nails tapered and slim and, and sharp lines. Yeah, but sometimes you need to go underneath, but don't lose the corners. Yeah, that's don't lose your stress point, but... 
you're really holding the nail firmly in place to prevent it from from bending, bending or breaking or yeah. cracking. Is there a curve in the upper arch of a stiletto nail from the apex downward? Or is it a flat line? Um, it can be a flat line, a little bit of a flat line, but I think a very, very little one. So, but you have to connect it. Hmm. It's not like, um, otherwise th you, you get a bridge nail. You know the old fashioned bridge nail? Yeah. If you make this line really, really flat. Yeah. But just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then connect it. A little bit curved downwards. Yeah. I also think when you're uh, making it really flat, you get more like a modern style stiletto that also has really like parallel uh, side lines when you look at from from the sides. Then but you'll have a flat. But with a modern style stiletto nail, is the lower arch angled downward or mm, upward? More straight. Straight. More straight. But then the top upper arch needs to be needs to. It's also uh, yeah. Down. It's more than when you're creating the stiletto. It's more like the product is folded down mm -hmm. uh, on the form, and here it's lay on top of the form. So you lay the product on top of the form when you really want to make like uh, a classic style yeah. uh, stiletto. But if you're really going for the modern style, then you fold it around the point. So you taper the form and more in. Yeah. So that you work on the sides. Yes, of the you form. work more on oh. the sides as well. Yeah. Okay. What do you do, Ingeborg? Do you watch what you're doing? Do you feel what you're doing, or do you listen to what you're doing? No, I watch and I f and listen. If you see now the line, it's not completely straight. So here I have less product than in the center. So I'm just looking my line to get my line straight. So I look to the dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. As yeah. a guideline. Mm -hmm. As a guideline. You can see now where I filed because of the dust. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. what I'm looking. And be careful. Eh? Don't go like this. No. <laughs> yeah, you always have to be careful how, how you hold the finger and the file. Mm -hmm. When you do longer nails in general and stilettos in detail. Yeah. And can you imagine that we also have to buff it to a high shine in the old days? Even a stiletto nail. Even a stiletto nail. And then with the spongy smooth and I'm pew in the point. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, hurts. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm a model now. <laughs> and not in the old days. But now you can see about the the, the dust mm -hmm. that I c almost have a straight yeah. Curve. Curve. Mm -hmm. But it's also one of the um, advantages, I think, when you're using power gel, because it's softer, it's easier to see where the dust is. Yeah. yeah. Do you work in your nail studio? Because you all still have a nail studio as well, yep. Ingeborg, uh, with only with power gel, or with gel and power gel, or also with acrylics? What I does do everything. OK. Is there any specific preference? Um, I have to choose between power gel and acrylic. Okay. You were also one of the first acrylic trainers for Magnetic, I believe. Uh, that made it yeah, really your specialty. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's no. go to the camera so that we see what you're doing. I'm filing the yeah, cuticle area with the expert, expert bit. bit. Thank you. At 30,000 <laughs> RPM, very s very fast. Yeah, so just... High speed, very fast. It's <laughs> not like we're driving a... Yeah, I think wait, when you're using it on high speed, it allows you to flow over yeah. the nail. And I was very afraid of the high speed. Mm -hmm, me the too, beginning. the first time that I used yeah. it, I was like, oh. What are they going <laughs> to do? And then with the pointed bit, oh my goodness. <laughs> but, but it really works. Yeah, Absolutely. And then I don't have to file so much near the cuticle. So I don't have a risk that I touch the skin too much. Mm -hmm. I can feel the pressure is also different. It's very light. And now I need a white block. You need a white block. Here you go. Yes, thank you. 
and then I'm gonna make it a little bit round movements to get really flat spots out of it. Is this a trick that may also Absolutely. always taught to everybody? Finish with rounded movements to prevent any flat areas. Absolutely. And I'm still using that only at the top. So mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. lift your finger. Oh, she puts the responsibility in your hands. <laughs> oh, that's smart. I should have done that. <laughs> and now I still have here a little one, so I need to file. Just blim the model. Hmm? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's the easiest part. That's the easiest part. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to clean everything. And then we are going to apply top gel. Yes. But I think we should just remove the dust from the table. So everybody can see it better. Yeah. Normally at home, I let my clients wash their hands. Yeah. Because then every dust particle is gone. Be careful of your hair. Of course, you want to check to see that all the dust. Absolutely. Well, it's really cool and I what I also want to do is hide what's going out for people to see. Oh, you're hiding the the, the, <laughs> the, the end result. <laughs> Absolutely, oh. that was oh, what I. Oh, you <laughs> fixing you. <laughs> First here, then I don't have too much product. Keep the finger downwards, and I'm using Supreme. Supreme finish without sticky layer but super high shine and it really f is like a magnifying glass to highlight your beautiful artwork. Absolutely. Just here a little bit around the nail. And what I love about the Supreme that it's a very thin top coat. So even if yeah. you make thin nails and you put Supreme on it, it still looks beautiful. Yeah. It well, I'm now playing around and testing a very thick top gel mm -hmm. that also has its benefits. Okay. Because it smooths out everything. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But of course, I'm an, a, a little bit experienced nail tech. Mm -hmm. You can go into the light. Oh la la. Yes. So what are we naming this technique? What are we calling this? I don't <laughs> have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> a mar not not marmer. It's like yeah, aquarel. Aquarel, but then real aquarel, not painted flowers that are hanging and wilted. No. Very Just cool. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw this the first time, I had something like, "Whoa, this is really cool." Okay. And you can also do it, and I didn't do it now, but if you do it with the yellow mm -hmm. and uh, the blue and not the pink with it, then you get a little bit of a brownish effect. And that's also really with the gold point. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, you can... Don't give away all of your tips and tricks, <laughs> Ingeborg. Oh. We have to save that for another show. Oh, okay. Before we go to the end result, next week the theme is Majestic Nails. Mm -hmm. And we're going to show really awesome extreme nails. I'm going to do a nail on... I think you. Yeah, <laughs> probably will be me again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is, we're going to go really all the way, and uh, so join us. For now, we want to see what you've yeah. done. And I always check my sidelines. Do that with the emery board. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. I do that with the emery Let's board. Let's take the top shot so that we see what Ingeborg is finding. And finally. afterwards, the sapphire file. The sapphire file. Because I want to be sure that there's nothing into the cuticle. And then I'm going to use a little bit of oil. Put it on the skin and just... Give it a gentle massage. <laughs> it looks quite <laughs> uh, extreme, but it's a gentle massage. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is it. Very cool. Super. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It even <laughs> matches the other nails because of the red around the cuticle yeah. or smile line. It doesn't look strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ingeborg, 
thank you very much that you, yeah, thank you showed us this design. With pleasure. And taught us and shared your ideas with us. I learned a lot tonight. Yeah, me too. I, I me learned too. why my power gel application is always too thick. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I learned not to use all of my power gel for my spatula. Thank you. <laughs> I learned how to work differently with our forms. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And I really enjoyed myself. So, me too. Beautiful nail. See all of you next week. And have a great nails week. Yeah, absolutely. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.